Hi everyone, I'm Bruno from MoveDot. Welcome to our second episode where we are studying the iCar real time while we develop a sports car together. We started our journey by making many changes to a sports car and creating a very capable track version for it. We changed the suspension elements, weighted inertia and selected new tires, already making it a lot faster. But in order to truly exploit all of the potential available, there are so many other aspects that you need to analyze about this car. In this next episode, in our development journey, we're going to be looking at the vehicle dynamics aspects of it. We'll be running ISO or standardized maneuvers such as step steer that help us characterize and quantify the behavior of the car. In this video, we'll teach you how to run and visualize these simulations, how to post-process the data, and then how to make changes to the vehicle based on the results that we got. There are many aspects of VI car real time for us to cover in this video, so let's get straight into it. In this episode, we'll be studying VI car real time's test mode, where we configure test sessions and the VI animator, a tool for analyzing test results. In future episodes, we'll keep building on top of everything that we learned in terms of quantifying car behavior to create even more automated ways of performing this type of analysis. The first thing we need to do is to go back to where we left off in our previous session. We'll open File in the main menu and click on Open Session. On the new prompt, we can go on Working Directory, find and select our Track Car Tutorial Session and open it. Everything will be exactly where we left them when we saved our session by the end of the last episode. Let's continue in test mode. In the last episode, we quickly ran a simulation to make sure our model was working fine. But that is far from the whole scope of what can be done with VI car real time. So let's dive deeper into it. There are three main windows in test mode's layout. On the top left of the interface, we can find the event bookshelf, a list of available events. On the bottom left, we have our fingerprint tree view, organizing the simulations that will be run. And this middle session is the property editor, where as we select items in the tree view, we'll be able to edit their properties. Each event represents a type of task that can be simulated. There's a wide selection of possible maneuvers represented here, and what's available in our installation can vary according to which VI car real time bundle you own. Let's create a new event to take a look at how they work. We'll right click the bottom tree view and select new fingerprint, the folder like structure where we will add events to organize test sessions. Select this new fingerprint and we'll browse the event bookshelf for the constant radius cornering test. We double click it, select the track car and hit OK. This is one of the tests we'll be doing later in this episode. We can also right click an event on the bookshelf like the steps here and add this event to a new fingerprint. Both these events are now shown in the tree view. We can use fingerprints to group events according to how we are planning our test sessions, so that it becomes easier to run a batch of simulations later and to keep track of their results. All events have a header where you can name them, assign the vehicle model you want to perform the test with, and include vehicle override files, which themselves allow for changing the model parameters for this individual test without changing the original data in its files. The larger area in the middle is reserved for setting up the properties of each event. We'll cover more details about this later when discussing the events themselves. The tabs on the bottom are also common for all events. Road settings allows for tuning the surface the tires will touch. This default road data file, for example, represents a perfectly flat surface. But we can also browse for different dot rdf file as well as edit them here to customize friction and other surface properties it's also possible to check the individual tire road box to define different surface files for each of the four tires and it's possible to assign custom 3d models for the road and environment so that we have a more natural 
visual representation of what's going on when reviewing the results in the VI animator. Vehicle settings tab allow for the repositioning of the vehicle at the start of the maneuver. It can be used to avoid having the vehicle come out of the bounds of the visual interface during a test we want to animate, for example or to automatically allow the software to calculate how high the Z coordinate of the vehicle must be in case that road file has a no elevation at the starting point. Similarly, tires can be forced to start at different orientations in this tab. At the bottom, we can see the solver settings where we can specify the following parameters for the simulation calculations. The time step at which the equations of motion are solved, where the lower the number, the more precise the simulation will be, but taking a longer time to run. If this parameter is changed, the output time step needs to be adjusted accordingly, ideally as a multiple of it. The integration method to be used for solving the equations of motion, the mode of simulation, which offers several options, files only, creating necessary files without running simulations, useful for batch setups, or we can select this to include an obfuscated vehicle model for secure data sharing and transferring setup between computers and even companies. This is good when we want to provide a model to a customer, but we don't want to disclose all of the vehicle's details. We can also run tests in interactive mode, the default option, meaning the simulations will be run and all files for future post-processing of the results will be created while live animation will do the same, while also displaying the simulations as it happens using VI Animator. It is also possible to run simulations with MATLAB Simulink, though specific configurations are needed. The tire limits to the right activates the computation and storing of an extra set of tire-related data channels to be included in the analysis results, though it does not change the tire's performance. The post-processing field allows for including custom Python post-processing scripts to be executed at the end of the simulation. With those, it is possible to generate different report files and to manipulate the standard results to add new channels, all done automatically. Each event is a class object that defines a specific type of simulation. We can think of them as presets, where we can pick the event that defines the type of maneuver we want to test our model and configure it to our needs. The events are available in the bookshelf where they are grouped under different categories. Under the VI driver category, we find a selection of tests that rely on some kind of car control, which is done by the means of VI driver itself being the software internal driver model. The VI driver is able to follow specific input demands and paths, allowing it to drive the virtual model of the car to perform the many kinds of maneuvers represented in this test. It can be adjusted to perform at different driving levels, ranging from a beginner human driver all the way to having superhuman reactions. We'll go more into the details about the specific events as we use them in the series. For now, note that we have cornering events, where the driver performs maneuvers while they follow a specific radius, open loop steering tests, including dynamic simulations that help evaluate the vehicle's steering response and transient behavior. Some examples here are sign steer and step steer. Straight line tests for common longitudinal dynamic maneuvers like acceleration, braking, and cruise control behavior. Stability events, a selection of complex maneuvers aimed at highlighting potential stability issues like rollover tendency, and course events where the VI driver will either perform high performance driving while following a given path on a road or navigating a scenario where obstacles are defined by columns. Other very practical categories that will be explored in other videos that are available are VI test rig that gathers events that simulate lab post rig tests used to characterize ride, VI safety meant to explore the vehicle's behavior in situations of abrupt loss of control or when the tires suddenly lose contact with the ground and the dynamic effects 
of impacts on the wheels, and Adam's Car Events, which runs fully dynamic simulations and models that are compatible with Adam's Car. The event under VI Speed Gen is meant to calculate lap times on a given track following a path using a simplified version of the model in a quasi-static manner. It is part of the process for some of the course simulations. All of this will be covered in our next episode. And external events are meant to generate input files needed to run VI car real time, coupled with external applications, like driving simulators. It's safe to say that events available in VI car real time cover pretty much all aspects of vehicle dynamics, and for each of them, we are virtually able to extract, post process, and analyze all kinds of data. We will study some specific events that are commonly used to quantify vehicle characteristics, and we will use them to further develop our track car. Our goal is to characterize its balance and handling. From the last episode's validation simulation, we know that our car can generate much higher lateral accelerations than the original model, but we still do not know how close it is to making full use of the potential available in the updates that we made to it. The events we'll now use are the ones we loaded into the tree view earlier, but taking some ISO norm recommendations when setting them up in order to get reliable and comparable data. We can go ahead and rename the fingerprints containing our events like this. Fingerprint constant radius and fingerprint step steer. We can now select the event in our constant radius fingerprint to bring its data into the property editor screen. We chose to begin with a constant radius cornering test to characterize the steady state balance of our car. To quantify that, we'll be looking at calculated parameters such as cornering compliances and understeer gradient, and we'll tell you more about them shortly. In VI car real time, this test is done at continuously increasing speeds mapping steady-state balance data from low levels of lateral acceleration all the way to the car's limit in a single sweep. This can be done because by default, our tire model thermal behavior is constant, and it will not heat up, something that will need to be closely monitored when doing such tests in real life. These are the settings we'll be using for this test. The initial and the final velocity are already calibrated to focus on the relevant range of the test, meaning we already ran a previous iteration where we asked for a much higher final value and we could identify 115 km per hour to be close to when the car begins to show transient behavior. We also made sure that the car is geared properly so that it can travel at all the required velocity range. We can allow for gear shifting for wider tests, but we're not going to do it now just because we want a smooth speed increase. Waiting a little bit before the maneuver start time is good because we can make sure that the car is traveling in steady state conditions when it starts to steer. This radius of 75 meters doesn't require the car to steer much, limiting the effects of steering kinematics on the results, and it is also in between what the car will experience on many racetracks. Going back to the calculated parameters that I mentioned, cornering compliance and understeer gradient are not calculated by default, but they can be included by post-processing the data available, either by using a Python script or by creating a custom expression and adding a calculated component in the animator itself. So this is the perfect chance for us to show you how to add these custom scripts. On our computer's file browser, we have to navigate to where we created our working directory. Within it, create a folder for our scripts. Download the scripts file provided in the description of this video. You have all of the post-processing code over there. Move the downloaded file to the folder we just created and unpack it. We can now go back to VI car real time and in the property editor for the constant radius cornering event, we have to enable post-processing at the very bottom. 
We'll then browse for the CRC underscore channels to within our scripts folder and select it. With this done, the constant radio scoring event is ready. Now we'll focus on setting up our step steer test by selecting it in the tree view. The step steer test allows us to look into your rate and lateral acceleration over time, following the steering application maneuver. With those, we can characterize steering and car response, as in the ability for the car to transition into a cornering state. ISA standards ask us to set up the simulation so that the car remains at 0.4 g of lateral acceleration when it reaches steady state. It's a relatively low acceleration level in an effort to avoid going over the tire's linear range throughout the maneuver. To find initial guesses for the amount of steering corresponding to 0.4 g, we can either run some iterations of the test or we can run a slow ramp steer test and check its results. We already did that and came up with the following settings for this test. As we did with the previous test, we wait one second to make sure the car is stable at the start of the maneuver. For this event, we configure how long it will take to input the steering as well as how much steering angle will be applied, measured at the steering wheel. Having cruise control enabled means that the driver will try to compensate the tire drag with the throttle, maintaining constant speed. Since this maneuver is very quick, we want to reduce the output step to the same scale of the integration step, to improve the resolution of the results. And this wraps up everything we need to start testing and analyzing our track car. We'll select the first of our fingerprints, then hold shift and click the last one to select all of them. Note that all events within the selected fingerprints will be listed here. We can click here to save and then the play icon to start running the simulations. The top of the solver log shows the status of the current simulation. Clicking around them allows us to change the information below to that of the simulation we selected. Scrolling around here allows us to see information about the progress of the simulations. When all of the simulations reports show they are completed, we have concluded our test phase. If we switch into review mode, we can see its tree view contains items corresponding to all simulations we ran. When we have one event selected, we can define how we want to post-process and review its results. The default post-processing is VI Animator, an application that is able to display simulation result data both as plots or as animated 3D scenes. VI Car Real Time also supports Atoms Post Processor if you have a valid Atoms license. If necessary, we can disable the animation to only bring up the plots. And checking this box allows us to select custom post processing Python scripts to go with the default post processed data. For now, select the event under our constant radius fingerprint and, with the default post processor settings, click the camera icon to initialize it. Despite the name VI Animator, this tool is capable of much more than just animating. It can also plot graphs, manipulate data and record videos. We'll focus on data analysis and not go too deep in those areas, learning things as we go. If you want more info, you can just check the help file, accessible from the main menu. The interface is split into a trivial to the left, listing the elements that compose the scene, the 3D viewer, and a plot widget to the right. Also, here we have easy access to some commands to manipulate the point of view, and here we find some tools to adjust the plots. At the bottom, we have the animation commands, which are pretty standard. We can click and drag around the timeline to observe the scene, whatever we want, and we can control playback speed as well. To change the point of view, we can hold the left mouse button to rotate the camera around the car, hold the middle button to pan, and scroll the mouse wheel or hold the right button to zoom. These are the same as the commands on the top. 
There are more camera controls available and they are all listed in the help file. We can click and drag the edges of the 3D viewer to resize the different parts of the interface according to our needs. For this constant radius cornering test, we added some custom channels using a Python script. It's also possible to create them directly in VI Animator. To do so, right-click the analysis in the tree view and add a calculated component. We can use the prompt to write the math expression defining the variable we wish to create. And upon clicking apply, it will now be displayed in the list of available data. We can navigate around some preset graphs in the plot widget, but we want to study some data that is not there, so we will have to create new plots. We can go to the rightmost tab and right-click it. We'll select Insert After to create a new tab, and we can use these buttons to change this tab's plot layout. Let's settle for the one-by-one -one option. We'll right-click inside the plot area and select Curves. This brings up a menu listing all of the data channels available. We'll click the Filter field and type Custom. We'll select Cornering Compliance F front and click here to load it into the dependent axis of the plot. We'll do the same for Cornering Compliance R rear and for Understeer Gradient. Finally, we can double-click the tab and rename it to Understeer Gradient. What we're looking at is the following. The coronary compliances show for each axle how many degrees of slip angle on the tires we would need to get to one G of lateral acceleration. It is used to quantify the strength or the grip potential of an axle. The important part is the lower the value, the stronger that specific axle is. So we can understand the strengths or weaknesses of a car for each specific axle, which is very powerful. The understeer gradient, on the other hand, is a measure of the balance of the car, comparing the grip potential of the front and rear axles. We can calculate it using the derivative of the steering or by subtracting the rear coronal compliance from the front one. With that in mind, notice that at high levels of lateral acceleration, the understeer gradient goes down. This suggests a tendency toward oversteer at the limit, which is not stable. For this car, we want its behavior to stay consistent at all speeds and lateral acceleration levels, showing a predictable handling for a wide range of drivers. Tuning the car towards more understeer, meaning a higher understeer gradient, at the limit might do the trick. We can save custom plot configurations in the plot menu. We can save plot as and name the file VI Animator Plot Tutorial. We're saving it to the default location where the animator already provided some example files. We can now close the animator and go back to review mode. We'll now analyze the steps to test results using custom post processing. We'll select the steps to event in the tree view We'll enable custom post-processing and we'll navigate to the folder we created for our scripts, selecting the stepplot.py file and open it. We can then click the play icon next to the post-processing field. This brings up two custom plots created using the script and they quickly highlight some metrics we are interested in. The first plot describes the evolution of the lateral acceleration throughout the test while the second one describes how the yaw rate changes. We are interested in the steady state value in the first plot that confirms that the lateral acceleration stabilizes at 0.4 g after the maneuver reaches a steady state, as by design. We are also interested in characterizing response times for both plots, which is a very important metric. It is calculated as the time it takes between the moment the car reaches 50% of the steering input and when it reaches 90% of the steady state value for the lateral acceleration and for the yaw rate. This is an indication of how quickly the car responds and it's a key metric connected to subjective evaluation of the vehicle by a driver. It is also possible to observe how far the metrics overshoot 
before stabilizing, as well as looking at the traces to understand how the car responds. And this gives us a lot of information about its behavior. We can zoom in and pan into the plots using the resources available on top of each window. We can see that both the lateral acceleration and the yaw rate oscillate twice for almost a second, right after the maneuver, suggesting that the system could be underdamped, showing too much oscillation. We now have an idea of how the car is behaving, and we can fine-tune it accordingly. But we want to be able to keep track of our progress throughout this development. So let's save this version of the car by cloning it again. We can go to build mode, right-click the track car main folder, and clone it. We'll call it track car episode 1, as it's coming from the previous episode. And we'll select the track car database. We'll now select the clones main folder in the trivial, save all, and delete it, which removes it from the screen. Now we have a backup of this version stored to compare with in the future. To summarize our findings from the test analysis, there is room to make the car more stable by providing a little more understeer at the limit, ensuring we have a predictable and stable car at the limit. From the response test, we saw that the yaw rate is oscillating considerably and we would like to have a more precise car with a little more yaw damping. Our plan is to fine-tune springs, and roll bars and wheel alignment in order to achieve the steady state behavior we want with the constant radius cornering maneuver while also getting the transient behavior we want with the step steer maneuver. All we have to do now is adjust the parameters of the car and run the tests until we find the performance that we want. In the future, we can automate this process. We can copy our constant radius cornering test to make it longer with a higher target speed so that we can fine-tune the wheel geometries and spring balance for ultimate grip. We can do something similar for the step steer test and see how the car will react to more intense maneuvers as we develop it. Or we can try some of the many other tests available to analyze other things like traction and corner exits, for example. After a few iterations, we came up with a new setup that solves the handling issues. We'll head over to the front suspension system and modify the following parameters to the values on the screen. We'll increase stiffness and damping, we'll change the entry bar rate, and we'll adjust toll and camber. The rear suspension was also updated, with these new values being used. Increase damping, we also changed the entry bars, and we also modified toll and camber. And with these changes in place, the second development step of our track car is concluded, and we can save the model. Let's see how the updates affected the car. In test mode, expand the ISO constant radius fingerprint. We'll right-click the event in it and copy it. We'll select this copied version, change the model to the EP01 version of the car, and rename the test accordingly. We'll do the same for steps here. We'll control click the fingerprints and run the simulations. When the log says all simulations are done, we can go to review mode and select the ISO constant radius fingerprint, initiating VI animator. If we observe the understeer gradient again, we can see its value now rises at high lateral accelerations, as intended, to provide some more stability to the car at the limit. By comparing the response test results, we can notice how the yaw rate is now a lot more stable, reflecting the updates we made. Another very interesting thing to do is to run a max performance event, if available in your software package. We'll study the max performance event in the next episode. For now, you can observe how the cars compare when running a full lap at a racetrack. In this episode, we talked about how to run simulation tests in VI car real time, doing some very interesting analysis. We learned how test mode works, we saw what kind of events can be simulated, 
we also talked about the possibilities and configurations for post-processing simulation results, and we studied how to use VI Animator to create custom plots to analyze the exact data we need. We did this while developing our track car further, it is now tuned to offer more predictable and stable handling. And on top of that, it's now also a faster car. In the next video, our car will get another important upgrade as we learn how to use lap time, batch simulations to define aerodynamic performance. I'll talk to you very soon.